<laughs> so this is inside the building, this is what we call the sauna stage of the, of the build process. And um, this is our, if you like, this is the, uh, these are the galvanized silk brackets here that are holding the building, that are holding the walls to the floors, etc. Um, this is uh, what is called in German magic tape, which is um, to protect the end grain during construction. And these are the first fix electrics with plastic tires. Now, when the electricians came on site and started putting the first fix up, they were on a six week program. After they'd been there for four days, the electrician came up to me, he slapped me on the back, and he went, Andy, mate. Which took me a lot by surprise because I've never been called Andy by a contractor before. <laughs> Lots of other things, but never Andy. So he said, I'm going to Ibiza. We're all going to Ibiza because we don't need to be here. At all. We only need to come back for three days and we finish the whole building. Because we don't need six weeks, we need seven days to do out the whole building. Because what they did, is I don't know about here, but at home, they wear little spills and they walk around with a cordless drill and they put the plastic tires in the ceiling and they chase the wine through, pull the wine through. And he said to me, when you're an electrician, the first two years of your apprenticeship, what you do is you use a hammer drill and you drill into concrete soffit. And then after two years, the ball joint in your shoulder goes, and then you can't do it anymore, and then you become an electrician that wires stuff together. He said, but with this, it's easy. Just wander around and call this drill. So these are the kind of things. There were so many, it's just one of them, so many different knock-ons that we hadn't really appreciated. This is the happiest building site I've ever been on in my life. It was absolutely fantastic. The builders loved it. It's not like being in cold, wet, dirty concrete, you know, it kind of gets covered with scratches, etc. This is a really beautiful, lovely material to work with. This is our double height space. You can tell I'm really sold, can't you? <laughs> this, is a, this is a double height space. Uh, we use the roof space as amenity. So this is one of the, this is just a nice place. Um, this, is, uh, this is as we're finishing. Now, to get back to, some, to, get back to my client, um, when we discuss building this building from timber, with timber, with our client, the client was adamant that the, only, that the only thing that we were going to do different or innovative in any way was to build the building in timber. And that we could only build it in timber if we could ensure that the rest of the building looked exactly like every other building in their portfolio. So they were not interested in the innovative nature, particularly of this building. As they clearly expressed to us, they did not give a monkey to the environment. That's the, that was the lecture we were had to look exactly like. So all the follow-on trades had to be exactly as they were with a regular concrete frame building. So we put plasterboard up, we laid the screen down, and then we finished the flats. And this is laminate flooring, by the way, before you get excited. <laughs> this is, um, so with regard to the building itself, there's, there's no way of telling you that this building is not made out of concrete. Apart from the fact that it went out six months quicker than it would have done. <clears throat> What this has done for us, though, is this has enabled us to be able to take, to demonstrate this building, to talk to people as yourselves today, and to, and to show that actually this client built this building because this was a cost-effective and fast way to build. Not because they were interested in environmental credentials, or they were eco-driven, or that they were a green a development market that marketed themselves as a green kind of developer, but actually because it was quick and it was cost-effective. But brilliantly, um, we got some press and publicity before the building went up, and when the building all sold on plan, it sold off plan, the whole thing sold in an hour and 15 minutes. And it sold to people who wanted to live in a timber building, <laughs> which was great. We didn't go <laughs> at all. <laughs> so, um, uh, talking about the following trade, so this is, this is a, a balcony, an inset balcony in the building. This balcony is waterproof through torch applied felt. So the guys sat down there with a big gas blowtorch and melted the felt onto the timber. <laughs> Which uh, gave me some work. This is um, this is nine weeks site waste. <laughs> so we had on site an Irish guy. We had on site an Irish guy with a little rolled up fag in the corner of his mouth and a broom over his shoulder with diddly squat to do for nine weeks. It's all you can find. I reckon brought this with him. <laughs> so it's nine stories in nine weeks, a time saving of 22 weeks. We did in fact finish a week early, <laughs> which was great. Um, so. I talked to you about the outside of the building. So with this building, when the cladding <coughs> subcontractor came onto the site, the cladding subcontractor took a line to the plumb from, from the top floor down to the ground, and the building was four and a half millimeters out of true. So unlike a concrete frame building, where you're plus or minus 50, 60 mil, depending on your, so 
every floor. With this building, the accuracy was so fantastic that rather than setting a line and working the tolerances back in, they could actually just build straight off the building. So that allowed us to really produce within budget a quite intricate pattern on the outside. So what we did is this is a shadow pattern from, from, the, uh, from the site uh, produced by the helioscope, and then we pixelated that and then picked it up and wrapped it around the building. So these are 5,200 individual panels um, around the building made of uh, tile produced from wood pulp. It's a little bit like Hardy Wood, but classier. <laughs> so I'm told. So this is the outer, this is the finished building here. And then the other shot on the other side here. Now, just briefly talk to you about some of the other projects we're doing at the moment. So going back to this stuff here, this is the basic tenant, the material to the five ply. The idea is that when you have this building that I showed you before at the very beginning, this structural diagram of these concrete columns and these concrete slabs, and this is how we were taught to do architecture, and this is how architecture was established at the beginning of the 20th century, and then we've spent 100 years working out what colour it should be, and you know, basically what, making it funnier and funnier shapes as we as we've done. But with this material, what we're looking at is trying to understand, and really throwing the question out there, trying to understand what the implications of building with this material are, what the implications are for architecture in the 21st century. Because what we want to present is a principle that this is a viable alternative to concrete, to reinforce concrete, and that this is the material that we should be building with in the 21st century. This is a project at Whitmore Road. This is a mixed-use project. We have three offices down here on the ground floor. This is a basement adjacent to a canal, so it's in concrete. Um, this is a photographic studio. This is a 24 metres by 9.5 metres. Cantilevers are uh, 1.8 metres across there. And then these are three apartments, and these are the party walls. So you can see that we're using the walls in the direction in which they are most suitable for that purpose as deep beams, which both carry the floors below here, there, Etc. and then the walls above. This is a, a hotel, 180 room hotel, just next door to my office, which we got planning consent for three days ago, which I'm pretty chuffed about. This is 180 bedrooms, each one of them constructed from prefabricated timber box. The uh, erection period of the hotel <coughs> at the moment is about, uh, it seems to be nine to 10 weeks above the ground floor to build the whole thing. Um, this is a cinema we're working on at the moment, again, very close to my office. This has um, 27 party wall agreements around the cinema. It's in a very, very dense part of London. The acoustics were a real issue here. So what we have is we, we, we actually built this kind of concrete shoebox, if you like, within which we're placing these cross-laminated timber auditorium in here, which can be completely acoustically sealed from each other and then from the outside world. This is a project we're working on with KLH and with the Austrian government and with anybody else who gives any money at the moment. And this is for a 25-storey building in cross laminated timber, looking at the strength to weight ratios of the material, seeing whether we should use a concrete core or not a concrete core, etc., etc. So this is this is what we're working on at the moment, and also trying to understand what the advantages of that will be in terms of stepping a building up as it goes as it goes up, because you don't need that concrete. And then this is the book that we wrote about it. <laughs> Thank you very much.